Say the line, Bart. This is my favorite episode of Chainsaw Man so far. Yay! That was a lot, dude. That was a whole lot. So much so, in fact, that I am instinctually just saying that this is one of, if not my favorite episode in the series so far. But hyperbolic statements aside, this episode was just unbelievable in terms of tension, emotion, mystery, sheer weight, and gravity. I feel like last episode is the one that most people are going to say was better and more climactic, but to me, the sense that I got now was that a lot of last episode was more so focused on setting up the explosive payoffs of this episode, no pun intended, and I loved it, man. Hello everybody, I am Phenom Sage, and welcome back to another Chainsaw Man episode review. Today we are going to be talking about episode 9, From Kyoto. And I want to say that I have a lot to talk about, but I actually don't in this week's episode. And that's absolutely not from a lacking quality of the narrative content. I mean, I really cannot stress enough how hard I was losing my mind in this episode by the halfway point onwards when you get into these absolutely absurd, incredibly unique, and horrific situations. These are the kinds of things that really show me why this story is so beloved. You can tell it's just made by such a twisted and creative mind that is thinking up these things that I have never seen before in these kinds of stories. And I guess that's really the place to start with this episode, man. What the hell is Makima? What power or devil does she have that lets her do things like this? Survive being shot to death? Create giant holes in the chests of these shooters? Again, like the past few weeks, I really think there's so many possibilities here that it's not even really worth speculating on as an anime only. But the, the only thing that I can think of, as far as her resurrection goes, is later in the episode we see that she uses death row inmates' lives as the trade for the lives of these shooters in a completely different area. And I, I want to believe that if she can do that, maybe she can somehow link her own life to somebody else's in a way that kind of uses their life as a shield to protect her from any harm. When I say all of that, and when I look at what she does in this episode, the power she has seems kind of absurdly strong, so I'm guessing there are some limitations to how she can use it. We see that she doesn't kill the snake devil girl or the sword guy with her, so you can maybe assume that it doesn't work on people who are too strong, or maybe people who have contracts with devils. It also raises the question on how Makima knew the names of all these killer shooters to begin with. Maybe she didn't know the names of the snake devil girl and the sword guy? I don't know man, clearly a lot of stuff left to be revealed and expanded on, but that is one thing that I like about a lot of the powers and the devils in this series, is that they always seem pretty rationally thought out. Even the snake devil girl, who just kind of appeared last episode and felt incredibly overpowered, is shown to have her own limitations and her own restrictions as far as how many times that she can actually use her abilities and what it takes to do so. But overall man, I just cannot stress enough how absolutely in love I was with how they handled that entire Makima sequence. The music, the direction, it just felt so scary and so unhinged in a way that I don't think we've seen from the series up to this point. And it was something that I was always hoping we would eventually get to. This sheer force and terror that Makima imposes on the people against her. And just the tone in general this episode felt so surreal and so intimidating. Amazing stuff, man. I hope we get a bit more of that in the next episode as well, but I think we're probably going to enter more of a breather episode. We're going to cry with Aki a bit, so maybe we have to wait for that a bit further down the line. Speaking of crying, you guys are going to hate me for this, but I genuinely got misty-eyed for Arai in this episode. I, I don't know, man. After last week, you probably think I'm insane for almost crying for Arai, but not for Himeno, but I, I don't know 
know, man, the way they handled that entire sequence, the way he gave up his life for Kobeni, and Kobeni's response to all of it, it just felt so powerful to me, and it really made me love Kobeni so much more. I bet you guys were laughing at me a couple episodes ago when I mentioned how Kobeni's whole thing could end up getting stale, and that I hoped that at some point in the future we would flesh her out a bit more and give her some depth that makes her more than just that one gimmick. And I fully expected that to happen, but not this soon. This is kind of a sacrilegious comparison to make, but Kobani reminds me a lot of Zenitsu from Demon Slayer, but just executed on a much, much higher level, I want to make that clear. I love how they established from the get-go that Kobeni actually was really, really strong, but they leave you wondering in what way just to reveal it in this really emotional, climactic scene for her. I really loved that whole sequence for her, this whole episode, man. Mi minus the recap part at the beginning, I didn't think that was entirely necessary, but other than that, the whole episode just felt really impactful in a way that I don't think the series has tackled before up to this point. All of those Jobber Special Division members are dead, most of her remaining team are split up and out of commission, Makima is doing who knows what, we now know that Denji's chainsaw heart is the key to pretty much everything that's going on. Big, big stuff, but that actually is one thing that confused me a little bit. At the beginning of the episode, they established that they need Denji's heart for one reason or another. That's their primary goal. Probably something relating to the Gun Devil. I'm more confused now than ever, by the way, about if they're working for the Gun Devil or if the Gun Devil is its own separate thing that everybody is just after. I have to imagine, like I said last week, that it is that second one, but there were some lines in this episode that definitely confused me about the Gun Devil. Either way, they say that they need Denji's heart, and yet when the Swordman guy and his goons have Denji surrounded, he specifically tells them to either shoot him in the arms or in the heart. Like, uh, what? Didn't we want the heart intact? Why are you specifically telling them to shoot the heart? That didn't make much sense to me. I'm wondering if that was maybe a mistranslation or just something that I don't understand right now, but it does make me wonder why Denji's heart is the key to everything. We know that the Chainsaw Devil had a past before it combined and made that contract with Denji. We know we've met multiple devils who know the Chainsaw Devil, so clearly it had some notoriety and infamy. So I want to imagine that potentially the Chainsaw Devil and the Gun Devil were longtime enemies or something. Maybe the Gun Devil has a grudge, and that's why the Chainsaw keeps attracting devils who have parts of the Gun Devil inside of them. It would also double down on the idea that these teams are in fact not working for the Gun Devil and are just trying to use Denji as a way to find it themselves. Whatever the case may be, I am just all in, dude. The story of Chainsaw Man right now feels like it's at its most exciting and intriguing and engaging. And I already know it's going to get even crazier from here on out. Before I close this one though, I want to briefly talk about last week's episode, because I did say that I wanted to let things settle, I wanted to figure out how I felt about certain things, I wanted to have some discussions and maybe hear some perspectives that I wasn't necessarily thinking about, and one week later I do find myself definitely more appreciative of the way that they handled Himeno's death. And the primary reason is kind of something that I did already mention in that review, but it stuck out to me even more the more that I thought about it. And it really does just come down to the fact that I don't think Himeno was ever supposed to be the kind of character in the story that I was kind of projecting onto her. I don't think you need to cry over her or get several more episodes of characterization for her to function in the story. I think her character accomplished what it needed to do just fine. It definitely still would have been nice, I would have loved to cry over Himeno, and I do think that beyond screen time, even just some different execution in that episode alone could have possibly done that for me. I mean, we just talked about how I almost teared up over Arai. <laughs> Himeno is definitely a better character than Arai, but regardless, I am more convinced now that it wasn't necessary, and I am really interested in these other directions the series is taking right now. The fact that really Denji, Aki, Power, and Kobeni 
are the only people left of this original group that we had. Another thing about last episode that I wanted to briefly mention, I felt almost ashamed when I saw it pointed out to me and I realized that I didn't even mention it in last week's review. The way that they handled Aki's sword and the curse devil was so unconventional and so interesting. They built it up several episodes beforehand, and I even mentioned in that review how I found it cool that they didn't immediately jump into using it. But in last week's episode, without even drawing attention to it, I hate how it didn't even really register to me what was going on. And yet at the same time, I love that about it. I love how the way it was executed could feasibly have it go over people's heads. and. It just happens. The situation gets extremely dire and Aki pulls out the sword with no hesitation to save everyone. No special attention brought to it, nobody on the sidelines telling Aki, no, don't, don't do it Aki, you're gonna risk your life, you're gonna sacrifice parts of your life or whatever. It's just pure tension and pure adrenaline. And I think that's a really underrated aspect to how this story executes things in general. Overall man, another excellent episode, I loved it. I hope other people loved it too, and I am not looking forward to crying my eyes out next week when Aki has to confront the idea that Himeno and a lot of the other special division members are just dead. They're gone now. Uh, let me know in the comments or in the Discord server linked below the like button what you guys thought about this week's episode of Chainsaw Man. Did you love it as much as I did? Did you not like it? I will say one slight criticism I had is contrary to all of the production love that I have given this series in all of the other episodes, there were definitely quite a few rough and flatter looking shots in this episode when you compare to the standard of quality that we've been getting this entire series. I still think it looked pretty good. I thought the episode visually was still better than most anime that you see today, and the direction clearly carried a lot of the best moments in the episode, but this is the first episode where I did think that it probably could have been stronger than it was. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I will see you in the next video.